this special video edition of KitCast. Today's topic is making accommodations for children with visual impairments in out-of-school time programs. My name is Tori Dunlap, and I'm the director of KIT's National Training Center on Inclusion. I'm happy to introduce Lisa Irving Ramirez, who is here today and to teach us these accommodations. Lisa has a great deal of experience in after-school programs and also as an inclusion facilitator in summer camps. We also have a group of kids from San Diego Junior Theater who are here to demonstrate the accommodations. Lisa, what's the first accommodation that you'd like to share with us today? Well, Tori, when you acquaint a child that's blind or visually impaired to your program setting, be sure to describe the settings around the child, encourage the child to touch what's in front or to the side of him or her, and be sure to remove the obstacle so that no child trips. Those are wonderful tips for accommodations, Lisa. What was the accommodation for the art activity that you wanted to share with us? Coloring and drawing are popular activities in after-school programs. Today I'm going to show you how to make a raised line coloring page. Raised line coloring pages can be used by sighted children and children that are blind and visually impaired. This is what the coloring page looks like when we're through. Kate, could you please show us how to do a raised line coloring page? Thank you. Kate is using a wiki stick. It's bendable wax that she's putting over the line of the coloring page. Kate, thank you for showing us how to make the raised line coloring pages. Brady and Shelby, would you please make enough pictures for the class? It's important to include everyone in the art room, including the child that's visually impaired. One way to do that is to separate the markers and the items. All children can feel the items, and some children can see the brightly colored items. OK, so we might be doing this when we're cleaning up or when we need to make different bins of different items. You're saying it's good to remember that children who are blind or visually impaired could participate in an activity like this. Yes. Good job. OK, so let's do it, guys. Let's give Kate a bin. And Rose a bin. So Kate, go ahead and you put the markers in the bin. And Rose, go ahead and put the glue sticks in the bin. So we've come out to the playground so you can show us some accommodations that we can make outdoors. Lisa, at KIT we get a lot of questions about how to ensure that children with disabilities are socially included in their after school program. Do you have any accommodations that you can share? Yes, walking sighted guide is one com accommodation. Hannah, who's visually impaired, is going to show Shelby how to walk sighted guide. Notice how Hannah takes Shelby's elbow a little bit to the back. Ch uh, Hannah's going to walk slightly off to the side and a little bit behind Shelby. Children can say things like, want to grab my arm? Some children with vision impairments may opt to use their cane. Other children that are visually impaired may be able to walk across the playground by themselves. Lisa, thank you so much for sharing all those great accommodations with us today. Was there anything else you wanted to share with us? Yes, when you include a child with a vision disability into your program, be sure to tell the child who you are. At some point, the child will recognize your voice or a personal characteristic, such as your long hair. That's a great tip, thank you so much. Yeah, 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 yeah,